welcome. I am so excited. I don't know if you can tell. I'm very hyped. I'm so excited to finally be showing this series to you guys, to finally be getting the very first season of Traitorous archived on YouTube. If you were there for this series live, thank you so much for all of your support and all of your excitement about it. I was super, super nervous to do this series for the first time. I think in this very first episode, you can tell how nervous I was. I ramble about it for way too long at the beginning, but this was such a brand new adventure for me. We had already done Bachelor and Hunger Games, of course, but like I explained, those were reality shows. I didn't have to have as much prepared and I didn't have to have as much all together. Like, my shit needed to be less together before the episode, but this is our very, very first scripted series that we did on my Twitch channel where we have a full series that has an actual plot and storyline that I wrote out all beforehand and put on a machinimated live for you guys on Twitch. And it is honestly in large part to do with my community, why it went off so well and why I had so much love and excitement for it as well because you guys all really fell in love with it as well and I was so excited to share the story with you and all of my fears were kind of put to rest even after the first episode seeing how invested all of you were in the story and sleuthing out all of the mysteries and seeing what was going on and just excited for the rest of it. So thank you so much. And now I finally get to archive it on YouTube and share it with anyone who missed it live and let any of you who saw it and were there to support it reminisce on the memories. Welcome to our very first scripted series on the Rose Garden Network, our very first soap opera, Traitorous. If you have been here for Bachelor and Hunger Games, it's going to be largely the same beginning spiel, so you can skip to this timestamp to see the new stuff, but there are a couple new points that I wanted to make for Traitorous that I don't make in the Bachelor and Hunger Games intro, so I would at least skip there to see those before jumping into the first episode. But our normal spiel, these are Twitch streams, as I was saying. These are not like Let's Plays that I have filmed strictly for YouTube. And so this series, it is less prominent than the other ones because I am looking at chat less. Again, it is a scripted show. So I kind of had chat covered during the bits of the episode and I was just reading through my script. Uh, if there's like followers or subscription notifications or whatever, I would stop to kind of make note of those for a moment, but most of the time I was actually kind of ignoring chat, so there shouldn't be too much of me reading chat in the episodes. I kind of just did that on the commercial breaks that I've cut out of these anyways. But if there's any of me like looking to the side and talking or responding to chat, that was because this was a live stream where people were talking and reacting in chat not just a pre-recorded video. So that is an element, but hopefully it shouldn't be too confusing. If I'm responding to anything specific, I try and do my best to read it out loud so you shouldn't really be confused. And on the other note, yes, it was a stream. Like I said, there were actual commercial breaks and since I was putting it on live, I would kick it to like our lovely classical music and the logo while people waited as I like loaded into a new household, set up the next scene, etc. I've cut all of those out for you guys because there's no need to wait when I'm not doing it live, which means these episodes are a lot shorter than they were live, but also there are a handful of cuts. I promise that if you notice any cuts, it is just a commercial break or some uh, irrelevant tech issue or like a quick little bathroom break or something. Nothing I cut out is rel relevant. So if you see any little cuts, rest assured, I am not keeping any of the episode from you. It is largely still exactly the live raw episode. Okay, those are largely my main points that I tell you at the beginning of these series is just so you guys understand that these are uh, archived streams, not like things that I'm, you know, putting on a recording and making flawless going into it. So here's the couple of things that I wanted to say for Traitorous specifically. Um, this was the first scripted show I put on, as I said, so it is a little bit clunky. I do ramble a lot, especially in this first episode intro, due mainly to nerves. I'm so rattled. Uh, beforehand, I remember like the pit in my stomach if something goes wrong, but it it turned out all all right when all is said and done. But because it is the first time I did something like this, I'm a little bit awkward in the delivery, at least in the first couple of episodes. I definitely get more into the flow of it as we go along. And it, if any of it's just a little clunky or awkward, you know, hey, it was kind of a first trial run of this, even though I think that it went off decently well. It's not flawless, so hopefully you still enjoyed the story and it goes off all right, even though there are a couple of moments that get clunky or I can ramble a little bit long in certain areas. Now, unfortunately, as much as, like, I love Traitorous, Bachelor and Hunger Games are 
lovely as well. I love them too. But this is probably like my baby. This is probably the project I'm most proud of so far. I really, really like Trader, so I got very attached to it. And unfortunately though, in archiving it for you guys, we do have some tech difficulties to deal with. There were a handful of episodes that did start to have some tech difficulties on stream. It was, uh, Hunger Games was right at the beginning of the pandemic. This was right after, so I think it started airing in May of 2020. Uh, you can check the description to see if I was correct in that. I always put the recorded date in the descriptions of all these archive streams so you know, like, what was actually happening in the world when this was filmed. But it, this was kind of when I was starting to get a little bit more serious about streaming or trying to improve my equipment and like streaming set up a tiny bit more. You'll see that past the first episode premiere, the overlays and like intro screens get a little bit more advanced because I switched to Streamlabs OBS in between. Like after I think the first episode, I think the stream after that is actually when I switched over to Streamlabs OBS and not just OBS. So we had some new fancy stuff to play with. Uh, it means I was still kind of figuring out my tech, and uh, we were just having a lot of tech issues, honestly, as far as stream being stable and frames dropping. So there are some episodes that are definitely a little bit less polished, is a little bit more like lagging and buffering and frame issues, uh, kind of like we were having in Hunger Games a little bit. Uh, I don't think that it gets in the way of the story too much. I tried not to say too many relevant things when that was happening. I know that the finale episode, obviously a bit ways away. It'll be uploaded as soon as I can. But the finale episode I know was unfortunately kind of a train wreck. I think all the story got out, but Sims was lagging so much. It was a bad day for Sims and I was pushing it with how many Sims I was trying to put in a household to be fair. But it was really clunky. I believe that the audio was okay on it, so you hear the whole story, but the visuals are not great. I would really love to remaster that episode at some point. I have plans to reshoot that, just um, to make it a bit more of a smooth look for the finale, because I'd like to have like a clean copy of it available. And I wanted to do that before I got all this archived on YouTube, but I unfortunately didn't have the time to re-film the finale with whatever's going on in my life at the moment before I wanted to get this up. Because I wanted to get all of this season up before I started season two, which means unfortunately one of the only, one of the projects that I didn't think was 100% necessary that I kind of cut from my schedule was remastering that finale episode. That will be coming at some point in the future. My last note here, I promise I'll stop rambling and you can get to the episode in a moment. The last like tech issue comment that I need to specifically point out for Traitorous is that on stream we were all good, people watching live, but if you don't know, Twitch likes to mute parts of your stream if there's any copyrighted music in it. I was just using kind of a random classical music playlist and it seemed sort of hit or miss on which songs it would try and mute. If a song ended up being muted that was at the tail end of a commercial break leading into the next scene, Twitch does not do a great job at just sectioning out the part with music to mute, and oftentimes the muting went further into me talking as well. And as you can imagine, for something story-based like this, that is a little bit of an issue, because you do actually need to hear everything that I'm saying to get the full story. There will be important story beats missed or like plot points missed if some of it is muted sometimes. Now, I passed filming Traitorous. I've realized that this happens pretty quick on Twitch, so I've started downloading my streams the second I am done instead of waiting a bit later into the night to try and get it before Twitch gets its hands on it and mutes it. So that shouldn't be an issue in some of the future stream, seri stream series, but this one, unfortunately, the only copies I have of some of these episodes have important story parts muted. I don't want you to lose any of the story just because this is an archive though. So I've not just left them muted, don't worry, but I have dubbed over any scenes that got muted by Twitch in editing. So if there's any scene where the audio, let's be honest, sounds a little bit clearer and the audio is not matching up to my mouth on screen, that is a part that I've had to redub over in editing. I'm sorry it's going to be kind of an awkward incongruency between the face cam and what you're hearing. Hopefully it's not too distracting, but it, that's the best solution that I can come up with so you can at least 
hear what was supposed to be said there in the story. I don't know if it's exactly what I was saying there. It's been a year since I filmed them and I still have my script, but I didn't like script these out line for line. I just kind of had like general blurbs of what needed to be said. So I've approximated enough. You, you get the same story beats. So don't worry. It's the, still the same episode. You would have, it's not all of the exact same words that I said on stream. I apologize. Hopefully it's not too clunky. And since this series is my part in joy, I wish that it was a little bit more polished and it, it, we didn't have to do things like that for the archived version here. I still think that it'll be a fun time and it's still a really fun story to catch up on and I hope you have a good time and I hope you also fall in love with the Clarks and the Winstons like I did in filming this. And yeah, let me know all of your thoughts and reactions in the comments. No spoilers if you've seen the whole season. There's a lot of different, you know, little twists and turns in the season. And so, it, you know, if you know what's going on, don't spoil in the comments. But if you are watching this for the first time, please feel free to leave your reactions. One of my favorite parts of doing this was seeing everyone's reactions. Two of my mods, my lovely mods, Robin and Jenna, actually got so invested in this that they made like an entire clue sheet where they were writing out all these crazy theories and all of these fun uh, notes. They would like note all of the little things that I put in there. I like to add little Easter eggs into my scripted series, especially in people like my mods, um, who pick up on all of the tiny, minute little details that I throw at you guys. Are, I love you. I love you so much. And I promise I do everything on purpose. So pay attention. <laughs> If you want to join in any of the discussion, we had a lot of fun running jokes that came with traders and a lot of memes that we made as well. But if you want to see any of our discussion and uh, little memes about it, join join my Discord. There's a link in the description. Uh, I'll put a link on screen too. But uh, my Discord is a fun place and I have a specific traders discussion channel. It's like my only show that I have a separate channel for information and a separate one for everyone to like lose their mind in and talk about it in. There's a ton of fun, crazy, spoilers, spoilers galore be warned. But there's a ton of really fun uh, memes and stupid jokes that we came up with in there at the after party podcast we started because there was so much chatter about it. We just ended up doing like a voice chat podcast every, after every episode where I would just cackle at all your guys' wild theories as you screamed at me about what happened in the episode. <laughs> Okay, I will stop rambling about this. I'm sorry. I'm just very passionate about this project. But without further ado, I will let you get into all of the drama of our first soap opera. And here you go. Here is Traitorous Season 1. Get boned up on your plot points. Enjoy it. Have fun. Get invested. Because Trader Season 2 will be coming to a screen near you very soon. But for now, here's Season 1. You guys, I'm nervous. I'm genuinely really nervous. I'm excited. Um, I have so much planned and I really want to jump into it and I'm so excited to reveal like all these plots I have had in my head for a couple weeks um, over the course of the next couple months. But um, we're just getting started tonight and so I'm very nervous to jump in since this is the first time I'm doing a show like this. Uh, so this is my <laughs> beginning disclaimer of I don't know exactly how the pilot's gonna go. Um, I think it should go pretty well, but pilots of shows are always rough, you know? So I've never done a show like this. Like, the reality shows, I don't have to plan that much. I kind of know what's happening. I can just jump in and let the Sims do their thing. This is very scripted, and Sims don't like to be that scripted. And so um, if they do things that they're not supposed to be doing, we're just going to cheat it away and count it as non-canon, okay? It's going to be a little less loosely structured than other things. Um, and if it's a little clunky the first episode as I figure out if the way I want to do it will actually work or not, then um, I apologize. But you know, I'm, I'm trying this out. It's a new format. It's a new thing. Um, yeah, maybe lots of retconning. Fingers crossed we don't have to do too much, but um, <laughs> that's my anxious preface of first episode might not be perfect and we might be changing some things of like how it runs for the next one. I'm also not exactly sure how long this is gonna go. I'm hoping it's not too short nor too long. I will try and fill space or like ramp it up if it seems to be going too long or short. Um, yeah. Hello everyone. Hi here. I'll say hi to all the people that I've noticed are here. So hi Robin, Jenna, Zay, and Marty. And I mean Gav, of course. I knew you were here. Um, Gav knows what's happening though, so I'm not gonna expect him to talk that much. And hello to anyone else that you guys have watching, if you have them in your households. I've seen I some of you say that you have some other people watching with you, um, which I, I appreciate. Hello, Annalisa. Hello, I and Michael and Jonah. I know you're probably there too. Um, yeah, okay. I'm stalling now because I'm really nervous, but... <laughs> uh, 
Oh, the other thing is it might be a little different than other series because I'm going to be probably checking chat less and talking to you guys a little less as I go through it. Um, hopefully the format isn't too weird. I'm not going to like voice act this or anything. I'm just going to kind of narrate and talk you through the conversations and like events that are happening. Sort of like I've been doing a little bit on Hunter Baby Challenge and Variacy if you've been watching those. Um, and I've been kind of trying to implement some little plots in there and just sort of talking through them. That's kind of how most of this show was going to run. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so let's jump into our pilot. Our pilot's going to be a lot of exposition and getting to know people. So it might not be the most dramatic see uh, episode. And I promise you guys drama. Don't worry, it's coming. But we got to ramp up to it, you know. The ep first episode is going to be getting into things. You're going to meet everyone. I've been giving intros to all of the people, uh, the main players in the families anyways, on my Discord. If you're in the Discord, you should totally go check those out uh, to just kind of let those names and faces be in your heads. But don't worry, we're going to introduce your you to everyone uh, all, all over again in the first episode. I have my wine here, which I'm probably not going to really drink, but it's more appropriate for the event, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited, it's such a new thing, and I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't either, but, um, okay. Let's jump into it. Are, are we ready? I don't know if I should have background music for this, uh, beginning bit, but, um, I don't. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and head on here, in here. Alright, you guys ready? Let's go ahead, jump on over to the game, and let's jump in. So, um, where we're gonna start, whoop! <laughs> where we start tonight is uh, not present day, we're going back in time a bit, as in uh, 56 years, so it is 1964, and we're going to go ahead and take a little look in on a young Robert Winston and a young Justin Clark. Now, these two have been in business school together um, for uh, a few years, and they've just graduated, and they've just gotten their first big gig. Um, working at a really fancy private security company. That's a little different than how we are used to it today, of course, because it's the 60s. We don't really have all this fancy computer tech, but they kind of run a security place. They provide bodyguard services to some pretty big families and companies around the town. And they've, um, they've kind of been friends. They were friends in business school and sort of had a friendly rivalry, you know, a little competition for grades here and there and such, being in similar classes. But now that they've both gotten hired at the same company, uh, the friendly rivalry is kind of kicking up a little bit. Um, so it's gotten a little less friendly. It's a little bit tense, but nothing too serious quite yet, you know. Uh, things are about to ramp up a little bit, though, because the two just went on a big job. We have uh, Robert Winston, the brunette in the back there, and then we have Justin Clark in the front. And they're looking over their reports, not really talking as much in the morning, not bantering as much, because Mr. Robert over here just got a pretty big promotion in the company, one that they were both fighting for. They were both just on a really big job for uh, a big bank in town, one of their biggest clients, and um, they actually stopped a big robbery. Justin was uh, the one who actually headed up that operation, and he was the one who really like led the charge on stopping the criminals, so he's a little miffed that Robert uh, got the promotion over him, but Robert, uh, sorry, Justin's actually going to go out and check the mail here. Their boss isn't quite in yet, he's usually a little bit late, but he's going to go ahead and head downstairs and um, check out what's what's down at, at the mail in the morning, you know, get their uh, packages and such. Um, I did not build this. I did build the main houses for the, uh, the families once you see those, but this is from the gallery. I did not have time to build an office for them because we are not going to be here for too long. Well, where did he go? There we go. So he's gonna go ahead and uh, walk outside, ignore the cereal downstairs, but um, what is this? He's gonna find a little package out here in front of the door, and it's actually addressed to him. He rarely gets mail like to him and not just the business, but this says it's to him and to read it in secret. And there's actually a, a little note scrawled inside here, so he's gonna go ahead and uh, read this. We're gonna pretend he's reading it, but um, this note is actually a little bit of an anonymous tip. Uh, it, it's telling him that, you know, you're probably confused that Robert got the promotion over you. Well, Robert actually went behind your back and went to your boss and took credit for the entire operation where the robbery was stopped. 
Uh, so that's why he got the promotion over you. You let him write the report, and he actually said in the report that, yeah, the whole thing was his, uh, his lead. He's the one who was actually the one who took down the criminals, which is not what happened. And so, obviously, Justin is going to be really irate about this. And I think this is when um, the rivalry, it's going to boil over a little bit. This has kind of crossed a line. It's finally, like, actually taken a promotion and money away from Justin. He's going to go rip in to Robert and be like, what the hell? Like, I just got an anonymous tip from someone that you went behind my back and, like, lied to our boss about what happened. You know that is not what went down. You know that I was the one who literally did all of the, like, the job. You were basically just my henchman out of that. And uh, you know that I've always been better than you at this job anyways and that I deserve that promotion over you 100%. Uh, <laughs> if you would stand, stand up here, you know. I mean, I don't think this is what Robert was expecting. They usually do kind of banter a little bit in the morning. Um, and this is, this is a little more than their playful banter that usually goes on when they first get in in the morning. Um, oh, mother fucking welcome wagon, go away. <laughs> um, anyways. Sorry, we're not taking new clients right now. We're actually closed. Um, I know we're usually open by this point in the morning, but uh, there's some personal business that we need to attend to first. Um, so here, we'll get them in an actual fight now. This is what I mean by things might be a little janky in episode one or throughout. Sims don't listen. There we go. Come on, get up and yell at him for taking that promotion away from you. What an asshole. Um, how dare he do that? And you know what? Robert's going to go ahead and yell right back because he's not really one to, like, take that kind of treatment from anyone else, even his kind of, like, frenemy up until this point. Um, he's going to go ahead and insult him and be like, what are you talking about? Anonymous tip. Like, what do you mean anonymous tip? We're in private security. Like, why would you just trust that? Like, it's a random, like, piece of paper that you just got in the mail. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, that's not actually a really reliable source. Why would I do that to you? Like, I know we've been competing and stuff, but of course I didn't um, do that. We're going to just have them go ahead and... Can they argue about career, maybe? Um, yeah, argue about career. Let's do that. And Justin's just going to be like, why wouldn't I believe it? Like, you've been after me for like years like you're the one who kind of started this little feud anyways you're constantly like making cutting comments around the boss and i've just had it even if like i didn't get this tip i would have figured it out i would have like known that that's how you treated me and i'm really tired of it i'm tired of you know if that's how you want to play then we're that's how we're gonna fucking play like you want to play dirty i'll play dirty too okay um and this is really where they're like friendship pretty much ends and it turns into uh a real, what, hate ship? They become real enemies here, and that's like the final straw that like broke the tension and made them like truly hate each other. And uh, whether it's petty or not, that uh, this this feud has kind of continued throughout the years. So as I said, this is it's 1964. This is 56 years ago. Uh, they're they're old men now. They're in their 80s, and they're definitely still having the same old arguments. They are still enemies, and they have uh, the some families of their own now. But they have instilled the hatred for the other family name in all of their children coming up. They both own their own private security companies now that are more like the ones that we're used to seeing in the modern age. Uh, present day will be set in 2020, but uh, everyone knows that the Clarks and the Winstons hate each other. I don't know if everyone really knows where it stemmed from, but that's the real origin of their fight. And uh, they try to avoid each other if they can, but it's really their families that are more in the public eye than they are now and that are still feuding until this day. And those are the stories that we're going to be covering in this series. We have seen the day that things boiled over from more friendly rivalry to true nemeses. Justin Clark and Robert Winston have never really ceased that rivalry in the years to come. We now cut to 2020, present day, 56 years later, and Robert Winston and Justin Clark are still as at odds as they were as young men. They have both gone on to have their own accomplishments, Robert Winston starting his own security company named Insurzo, Justin Clark, of course, right on his heels, starting his own security company, Securevo. Both of them esteemed companies, but 
absolutely at odds and trying to one-up each other at every single turn. The one-upping doesn't stop at the business side, though. Justin and Robert have also always kind of one-upped each other in their personal lives as well, trying to have the biggest house, the most well-accomplished and successful family, the most kids, any small bit of competition they can have in between each other without having to interact as much is something that both of them have definitely still jumped on, even well into their old age. Uh, as we can see here, we have uh, Justin Clark, the same blonde young man that we saw uh, just in the last scene, and now 56 years later is an old man starting to come to the end of his days, his loving wife Rona reading in the back corner. These two have been pretty inseparable ever since they wed many, many years ago. Uh, their wedding portrait is on the back wall there. They have always been kind of two peas in a pod ever since the two of them linked up. And now, getting into his older age, Justin has made lots of accomplishments, but it, is, it has been time to retire from his position as head of Securevo. Uh, security, and he has actually given that title over to his middle daughter, Marissa. Well, Robert Winston has uh, done a similar thing, retiring at this point in his old age and given the company over to his eldest son, Justin's eldest son, seen here on the right, Justin II, of course, has actually decided to go down a more medical route, becoming a doctor. A uh, well-esteemed surgeon, and so he's not really in a position to take over the security company. But since Justin Clark is getting so old and his health is starting to deteriorate, Justin II has moved back into the big Clark estate family home so that he may stay in close contact to be able to take care of his father, something that uh, they argue about a lot and are currently arguing about at the moment. Justin II has uh, put his father on a somewhat more limited health regime as he constantly tries to get Justin to stay on, but Justin's often reluctant to actually do so. Currently, Justin II is berating his father for, Dad, I've told you so many times, your back is too bad at this point. You cannot be out golfing at all hours anymore. Justin just yelling back at his son, saying, I can do what I want. You know, I've made it this far. I am perfectly fine. I know you tell me that I don't have the health to do this anymore, but what's going to happen? I, you know, I can't enjoy myself when I've gotten to this point. And listen here, you may have all your fancy science and doctory stuff, but I'm still your father. I'm still the eldest here. So you should respect me and listen to what I'm saying when I tell it to you. An argument that they've had countless times over and over, but Justin II isn't going to give up on because, yes, he does have more medical knowledge than his father and knows what's best for him. And of course, as this conversation often ends up going, Rona, staying out of it for the most part until things begin to get more heated, uh, is going to come over and interject as she often does, since no matter what, whether he's in the right or the wrong, she tends to stand behind her husband. So she's going to come over and join the conversation as well, uh, joining in and backing up Justin's side here, telling their son, listen, sweetie, your father is right. You know, I know you're just trying to help, but you're only hurting by pushing him to do something that he doesn't want to do. If you truly want to take care of him, like you have said you are here to do, then you would let him spend his last, you know, his older days in leisure here doing what he'd like. You should have a lot more respect for your elders instead of trying to push this ridiculous regime on him. Justin II used to this constant berating, but not really going to back down. You know, he is he's in his 40s. He's a full-grown man, a respectable adult himself at this point. He's not just going to shut up because his parents are yelling at him, too, saying, you know, listen, I am just trying to be here to help you guys out, but if you, like, I'm not going to stop just because you don't want my help. Justin uh, kind of just brushing him off again, muttering under his breath how, you know, these pills you give me just make me feel even worse. I don't even do anything. Justin the second kind of ignoring him. But as he is leaving, Justin uh, Clark the first is going to throw out to his son one more line of, hey, if you see your sister Marissa, can you tell her that I, I want to talk to her? Tell her to come talk to me. Justin the second rolling his eyes, uh, his sister often absent and saying, yeah, sure, whatever, dad, I'll tell her to come talk to you when I see her next. 
We cut now upstairs to the rec room in the family home where we see this lovely woman, Lorena, at the easel. Lorena is Justin II's wife, and uh, he's actually going to go up and find her to talk to her right now. Uh, we'll yell to his sister if he sees her, but that is not his priority for now. Justin II is going to go talk to his wife. Just starting out in her painting career, so her her kids are all out of the house now, um, or well, metaphorically. Christopher still lives in the house, her eldest son um, in the family estate, but uh, her daughter's off at college, her youngest child, so she is usually just preoccupied with being a mother, but that's kind of a role that she doesn't have to fulfill every second now, so she's sort of exploring new hobbies, you know, she's trying to find what she wants to do in life, she didn't really have uh, too, like, strong of a career before she met her husband and just became a mom, so... Uh, this looks like a new opportunity for her to get, like, a new lease on life and figure out what she wants to do, you know? Um, so he's gonna go ahead and, uh, talk to his wife here. She's gonna be like, hey, how'd it go? <laughs> like, I know that you never really like having to go tell your dad not to do something, but I appreciate how much you care about your, uh, your family. Here, I'm gonna actually have her stop painting so she'll talk to her husband here. Um... Let's get a better frame. Sorry if I cut them off. Like, I'm trying to, like, work with this. Oh, what the fuck did you two just do? <laughs> I'm trying to work with the framing that I have on OBS here, so I apologize if anything gets cut off. But, uh, he's like, yeah, you know, it didn't go great as usual. He told me to fuck off, basically, but, um, I'm used to it. And you know that I'm not gonna stop. You know, I'm gonna take care of him, so. Same tune, different day, you know? <laughs> um, so. I'm just gonna be like. Yeah, I pre oh look, she's autonomously expressing fondness. Perfect, that's basically exactly what I wanted you to do. Um, you know, she's like, oh, like, the way you care is is one of the reasons that I fell in love with you, so um, good on you for persisting. Uh, his sister Marissa that he's supposed to find is actually going to go ahead and come in the room. She heard Justin the second coming up the stairs, so she was going to finish up whatever she was doing and go ahead and head into the, the room to go uh, basically ask the same thing of Justin and be like, hey, um, how to go to dad yell at you? Uh, let's just discuss interests. Where is she? There she is. So this is the middle child of the Clark family. Um, Marissa... And she's actually just been given the t oh Jesus Christ sorry the walls are kind of annoying um, I'm working with it uh, <laughs> so this is Justin's younger sister the middle the middle child she's quite a bit younger than Justin the second they had Justin the second like really early in life and then they waited um, almost two decades to have another kid and that's Marissa and she's she's only 36 but she has already been given the title of CEO for um, the security company Securevo that Justin um, started and had been running for a long time here i'm gonna actually have them go ahead and chat over here a little bit uh so we can see them a bit better uh, instead of them congregating by the wall but uh her her and justin the second like they aren't super close they kind of have like a weird business relationship almost um you know they're siblings they kind of only they communicate in just very like logistical terms most of the time but sort of stay out of each other's personal business much um but it's kind of the same conversation that uh justin the second and lorena just had you know talking about how stubborn like their dad is but they're all pretty stubborn and uh you know don't really give up easily when it comes to whatever they want to do so uh justin's gonna go ahead and tell um Marissa, that their dad wants to, like, talk to her, though. Um, he, he said on the, his way out of the room that um, he wants to speak to her. <laughs> She's just gonna be like, oh, God, what now? Like, what does he want to talk to me about now? He's been on my back about acquiring the business so much. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. But whatever, it's gonna be worse if I don't go down there. So, fine. Um, and before, before she leaves the room, we're gonna go ahead and... Um, here, he's... I can't not letting me share a secret he's, he's gonna hug her though and just whisper her in her ear and be like uh hey marissa you might want to you fix fix your smudged lipstick a little bit before you go in and talk to dad like i'm not gonna ask but you might want to fix yourself up a little bit uh so he's just gonna kind of whisper that in her ear under the guise of a hug not that they hug that much so i don't know if it's that great of a guise but um she's gonna be a little embarrassed by that i mean she already kind of has some flushed cheeks 
but uh, she's going to go ahead and head over uh, to her and her husband Sean's bedroom over here. Did I not put a mirror in their room? Oops. <laughs> Whatever. She'll head to the private bathroom then, and she's just going to go uh, freshen up a little bit before she goes and talks to their dad downstairs. Um, so... Yeah, she's gonna head out. Oh, another hug. Okay, that she can lean in and be like, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, just a little embarrassed, you know. And uh, Justin's actually getting getting a text. He's gonna, oop. <laughs> so my border doesn't cover the phone. It's fine. Uh, I just want him to, to look at his phone, because, um, oh, here. Uh, just, just in the second, uh, gotten a text from his invisible phone. There it is. And, um, yeah, he's just gonna re reply really fast. And then, um, uh, he's gonna go talk to his wife really quick. Uh, he's got a bit of some, um, flushed cheeks now, uh, too, after receiving this text over here. I don't know exactly what that was about, but, um, he's just gonna go ahead and go kiss Lorena one more time and be like, oh, hey, babe, like, before it gets too late into the day, um, I'm gonna go head out and check on the practice because, you know, um, I have been at the practice in a bit, and, uh, he's actually left most of the care of the practice to their son, Christopher, who's just recently graduated medical school. He's doing his residency as a doctor at the private, pr at his father's private practice right now, and, like, he does trust his son to kind of take care of things at the, um, <laughs> <laughs> is this a Lannister situation? No, there will be no incest. I'll spoil that for you right now. Don't worry. There's no incest. And if any incest happens in The Sims, we're canceling it. I swear to God, I tried to fix all of the family relations so they wouldn't try and fuck their family. But if something slipped through the cracks, I apologize and it's not canon. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be like, listen, I trust like, Chris that Christopher is taking care of it, but uh, he, he took the day off today, so I just wanted to go ahead and step into the practice just to check on, check in on how they're doing, you know, make sure everything's running fine, and Lorraine is just kinda, gonna kinda chuckle at him and be like, oh my goodness, you worry too much, like, your employees are incredibly capable along with their son, even without him there for the day, I'm sure they're fine, you've been, like, micromanaging them way too much, they'll, they'll be okay, uh, <laughs> and Justin's gonna be like, I understand, I know what you're saying, um, I do trust them, but you know me too, I'm not, I'm not gonna stop worrying until I go see that everything's fine for myself, so, um, I will see you later, I love you, here, we'll let him give her a little goodbye kiss, um, here, uh, do, 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 let's do, oh, I'm comfortable with her thick body, <laughs> let's go ahead and kiss her, um, you're not gonna go hook up in the closet right now, please, um, you have a practice to go check on, Justin, um, stop it, <laughs> give your wife a goodbye kiss, damn it, <laughs> oh my god, they're about to go hook up in Marissa and Sean's closet too, yikes, <laughs> Drama, but no incest, 100%, I I will tell you that. Um, so yeah, there you go. Give her a big old smooch goodbye, and then um, Justin the second is going to go ahead and head out. Uh, you know, he's like, I'll be back in a couple hours, like, I'll bring, I'll bring some dinner uh, uh, home with me, you know, I'm just going to have him head, uh, head on out here, so uh, <laughs> as he's doing that, we'll let Lorena get um, back to doing her painting here, resume large painting. Let me make sure they actually stop interacting with each other after that big old kiss. Uh, and then we'll check back in with Marissa. I think she's done freshening up now in the bathroom mirror. So she's going to go ahead and go see her parents since her presence was requested down in the master bedroom. All right, go ahead and head down. I'll, let's, get ch let's check chat a little bit. I mean, I'm glancing when I can over here. Well, Marissa makes her way downstairs. Uh, I can give a tour of the house at some point. I just have, like, people set up for different scenes. <laughs> so I'm trying to, like, keep things cut in oh. in the house instead of showing the whole thing. Um, <laughs> it was she snogging because it wasn't Sean. We don't know that much. Why would it have been Sean? That's their husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, no incest for sure. Don't, don't worry, guys. <laughs> Stamp of... 
approval. Okay, so he, here we go. Marissa's downstairs, and she's just, uh, here, I'm gonna actually, we're gonna, if you see me cheating on the emotions, just ignore it. Um, I'm trying to hide the menus as best I can <laughs> to keep this as the illusion um, there, but um, I'm just gonna make her uh, a bit tense, you know, she's annoyed. She doesn't really want to go talk to her father down here. She doesn't like an only has for appearances. Oh my goodness, but girl has a lot of flirty moves going on. Why is it my... Excuse me, game. Okay, well, um, for some reason I can't get rid of the moves. Let's pretend she looks a little more tense. Um, her cheeks are just a little still flush from whatever she was doing before, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but she's gonna go ahead and uh, come on in here and let's see let's just ask ask about day be like hey pops what's up uh, Justin said you wanted to talk to me we're gonna have her mom go ahead and sit down here too um, oh look they're gonna give give a little hug um, they're, they're, they don't have too bad of a relationship either. Um, kind of similar to her brother, like they're not like super duper close. A lot of people in this family, I think, um, at least um, with Justin, Rona, and their uh, immediate like children, kind of operate on a certain level of like business. They don't get too personal in the conversations with each other. Uh, but he's gonna go ahead and um, let's let's do. Uh, can he talk about recent studies? I don't know what his wicked whims traits are. <laughs> so. Ooh, are the little interactions from Wicked Whims things kind of, like, spoiling what their traits are? I'm not going to tell you guys their traits for, like, a while anyways, just so you know. Um, but okay. Ooh. Uh, sorry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I didn't realize some people were autonomously given jobs by the game and need to be at uh, home right now. But anyways, uh, he's going to rant and rave at Marissa a little bit and be like, yeah, I wanted to talk to you, so um, I checked the business accounts the uh, a couple hours ago this morning, and they're like a couple percent off from what you told me that they were supposed to be right now, and so I just wanted to check in and be like, uh, what is what is up with that? Why are the numbers not exactly what you told me they would be when we spoke yesterday about Securevo? Um, and kind of like Justin the Second and his dad. Uh, arguments like this, I think, happen, have been happening between them a lot in the past year or two when uh, Marissa's been running the business. And she's definitely tired of hearing shit like this. <laughs> it's gonna be like, Dad, please. I thought we talked about this. I told you to stop checking the business accounts. You gave the CEO title and ownership of the company over to me. I don't even know how you still have access to those accounts. Um, you put me in charge of them. You should trust me with that. So, like, stop meddling. Sometimes things change. Sometimes I am a couple numbers off, but everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Stop. Just let me handle it. I know I'm young, but you gave me this business for a reason. You knew that I could handle it, so let me handle it. You know, look, she's even, like, mocking him. Here, try to calm down. Because <laughs> he's really angry with her right now. Uh, and he's just gonna kind of retort. Um, not not hearing it. Just like how uh, the conversation with Justin the second went. And say, listen, when I was in charge of this company, um, chew out. Yeah, we'll have him chew her out. When I was in charge of this company, my numbers were never off. Like, every single day they were exactly what I projected them to be. Uh, there was zero discrepancies. And yeah, I gave you this company when you were really young, but maybe that was a mistake. So you better, like, shape up and figure out what you're doing. Uh, because I don't want you running this family into the ground. Maybe you should spend a little bit more time focusing on your employees at this huge company instead of off sleeping with that idiot husband of yours, uh, which you didn't even fix your disheveled clothes very well before you came in here to have a talk with me, uh, which I think she's kind of embarrassed about that. I think she didn't really realize that, you know, like a couple, uh, buttons on her shirt are like still a little undone, you know, she just looks a little and, uh, disheveled, so I'm just gonna actually make her embarrassed, um. Well, that, the, her horny mood's still really pushing through, though. Uh, her, her mom's gonna go ahead and jump in a little bit. Um, again. 
uh, with this conversation as well. Uh, it's very, very similar to what the conversation with Justin the second. Uh, she's just going to insult her and just be like, yeah, um, you, you do seem to be a little distracted lately. Maybe you should uh, listen to your father more and actually take care of our company. Don't run our family wealth into the ground. Um, I told I told your dad that maybe we shouldn't trust you so young and wait a few more years. Uh, just because you did business school really fast doesn't mean that you're smart enough to run an entire company on your own. Uh, so um, maybe you should just let what your father's saying to you sink in a little bit. Uh, and, and I think Marissa's about had enough after that, you know? <laughs> so she's just gonna go ahead and, oh, I wish I could make her angry. I want to turn to smock away. <laughs> but, um, can't get rid of her flirty moods. Um, furious. She's furious. <laughs> her, her moods are in the background, at least. Uh, it's been a very, it's been a roller coaster of emotions for Marissa here, but, uh, she's really tired of the family and doubting her. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to like tear, take care of this company just because it's not exactly how they would do it. Um, she's uh, she's just fine. She knows she's fine. And so she's just going to go ahead and uh, stomp on out of the house here. Um, and just she's just going to go for a little walk to cool down, you know. Um... So we'll let her head on out of the house, and then as um, as she's heading out of the house, she's gonna go ahead and uh, cross paths with a couple people heading on into the house here. Um, let me just get them ahead and inside. <laughs> uh, hopefully they, they will cross paths like I'm planning. Um, pretend one of these cars is gonna go away, but uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe Marissa's gonna go for a little drive, just stomp on out of the house, but uh, someone that I know you're all been waiting to see. Miss Charlie is going to go ahead and head on into the house. Here's Charlie. She is Lorena's daughter who is away at college studying political science right now and she's spending some time at home. This is her boyfriend. Um, should co I don't want free earbuds. Go away. <laughs> um, there we go. There goes Marissa stomping on out of the house. Uh, I think Charlie probably waved uh, hello or goodbye to her. She walked on out but Marissa didn't really respond. Uh, her and Charlotte don't have that good of a relationship. She's kind of used to that. Uh, but this is her boyfriend, Shakoba here, who is in college for liberal arts, and they've been together for a couple years. They're both seniors in college now, and then this is their junior in college roommate. Oh, she's really sad, but this is their roommate, Mohini, and, um, Charlie's best friend that, uh, she met early in college as well, and they became really close, and so she lives with them, um, the, the grandparents aren't too happy necessarily about uh, the way Charlie kind of presents herself, you know. She dresses kind of skimpy, she has a lot of tattoos, and they aren't really happy that she lives with her boyfriend in college. Uh, out of wedlock, who knows what they might be doing, you know. But uh, they figure since her best friend Mo also lives with them that it can't be getting uh, too risque in the household. So they, they kind of make snide comments about it, but they let it slide. These three are just home for the weekend for a little bit. They're just home to do some laundry. Uh, Lorena, uh, Charlie's mom, yeah, is more than happy to let her her boyfriend and her roommate and best friend, uh, I guess they're both her roommates technically, uh, more than happy to let them come home and do their laundry as well. So I'm just going to have Charlie go ahead and head on up. She's like, hey guys, I'll, I'll meet you in the laundry room. I'm going to go say hi to my mom real fast, let her know that we're here. Uh, and I'm just going to send Mo and Shakoba over to the laundry room, actually. Um, here's the little butler's quarters over here, uh, right next to the laundry room. So we're just going to go ahead, send them in here, and then we're going to head back outside. We'll talk to them in just a minute, but, uh, <laughs> Um, I'll catch up on chat probably um, when I had the commercial break. Okay, I want to keep rolling on this plot here. We're gonna go ahead. This is uh, this is Marissa's black car right here. So let's pretend that she gets into this car. Uh, EA, give us transportation. Um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have her just go ahead and stomp down the road. Let's pretend she got in the car and, and drove away though. Uh, if we go ahead and head on across the street, though, as uh, Marissa goes away to, to let off some steam for a bit, you know. Okay, this is going way too slow. Um, if we head across the street, though, uh, 
right on over here we have said husband Sean and their adopted daughter Madison over here um, taking a little fishing break so they've been out here fishing for a couple hours um, doesn't look like she's really caught uh, a fish there but I think they're both having fun um, oh he's feeling pretty confident though teaching his daughter how to fish um, so they're pretty close actually even though you know Madison is adopted and uh, her mom doesn't necessarily pay the most attention to her um, at least uh, her, her dad is pretty close to her though I'm just gonna one second okay there we go <laughs> I need someone out of the driveway that's supposed to not be at home right now um, so yeah, they've been out here fishing for a bit, enjoying the beautiful weekend afternoon together, you know, bonding, and, um, uh, Maddie, Maddie's gonna glance over the house and see her mom, like, a stomping away, you know, and be like, yo, why is Marissa so angry, like, what's she doing? Uh, here, let's actually get them into conversation here, <laughs> um. So yeah, she's gonna be like, why is Marissa so angry? And her dad's gonna be like, uh, Maddie, what have I told you? <laughs> like, don't refer to your mom as Marissa. Okay, um, here, we'll have her just complain about parents, actually. Um, <laughs> like, she is your mother, don't call her Marissa, and I don't know why she's so angry. She's angry a lot of the time, okay? You know this. <laughs> oh, as he catches a really big fish. Uh, let's actually, let's stop their fishing. We'll get them in a conversation. They're going to take a little break. It's been quite a long time. And she caught a little minnow too. Look at that. They're, they're both learning. They're growing and improving their skills. <laughs> uh, so she's going to be like, ugh, yeah, I know you've told me not to call her Marissa, but, um, maybe I would call her mom if she acted more like my mother. Uh, she's not even my real mom anyways, so why should I? And Sean's going to be like, listen here okay I know but I'm not technically your real dad and you call me dad so you can't use that excuse first of all and second of all you know that she has a lot on her plate that you know she's upholding the family name and everything and uh, she's really stressed out and so maybe you should cut her a little bit of slack she we, you know she loves you she wouldn't have adopted you she didn't want a kid and didn't love you so like just just cut her a little bit of a break okay like I, I know you guys aren't very close right now but you'll grow close in time uh <laughs> maddie's not having it though she's like okay yeah sure like I, she's she's never acted like she she loves or cares about me like you do um, and circling back she's not gonna really let Sean get off of the topic that she wanted to get to she's gonna be like hey speaking of um, real real mom um, have, have you given any more thought have you asked Marissa about maybe trying to find out who my birth mom is and Sean's gonna be like I told you like, as I was just saying, she's got a lot on her plate right now, you know? And you know what your mom always says, if it ever comes up, that she just became the CEO of Securevo not that long ago. She has a lot of pressure on her in the public eye, you know, being the new head of such a prestigious company and being so young and, like, a young woman at that. A lot of people are doubting her, and she can't have anything that looks bad in the public eye right now. You know she thinks that the public will assume that she doesn't treat you very well if, you know, you don't really care and want to uh, try and find a different mother than her. She just thinks that'll reflect badly on her in the public eye right now. You know that she doesn't want that. So just just give it some time, honey. And, like, just bring it back up again in, in a bit. I don't know, maybe another year or two. What's the rush? Like, you have a wonderful life here. <laughs> and Madison's just gonna be like, I asked you if you could at least ask her, though. She doesn't listen to me. You know she hates me. Uh, or at least I know she hates me. And she, you know, she's at least will will entertain the, a conversation with you more. Uh, Sean's gonna get a little sheepish, too, and be like, no, no, I, I haven't really asked her again yet. You know, she's been, she's been stressed lately. She has a lot on her plate. Um, I just, I've not really wanted to bother her with it again. You know, it upsets her and I just, I don't want to stress her out more. And uh, you know what, Madison, I kind of agree with her. Um, like she does have a lot of scrutiny placed on her right now and it, it wouldn't benefit any of us if, um, you know, 
if, if there's anything that looked even slightly bad in, in the public eye. D don't don't worry though. Like I'm sure I'm sure your mom will, will let you look for your birth mom. I uh, would be happy to help you for sure. Um, eventually, just just please drop it for now, okay? <laughs> Uh, Mad Madison's pretty angry though because it's it's something that she's been wanting for a while. She's a very curious kid, you know, and um, Sean's got his head in the clouds a little bit. He's been in love with Marissa since their um, freshman year of business school together, and um, yeah, she always turned him down. I know he he feels bad for like saying this to his daughter as well, but he knows it's not gonna happen. Um, he loves Marissa and she has a lot of sway with him, but he pretty much has zero sway with her and they, they barely talk that much either. Um, Marissa's uh, mainly married him because she needed a husband to appease her parents and I think Madison's even more aware of that fact than, than her dad is and she's pretty aware that she was uh, adopted because her mom is infertile and her parents was, were pressuring her to get a kid to carry on the legacy. Um, and so she's never really felt a connection with Marissa and has just been really anxious. As she's growing up, you know, she's starting to, like, hit puberty. She's been wanting, like, a mother that she feels like cares about her a little more. Um, and maybe her real mom does. And so she's been wanting to find her real mom so badly lately. And uh, Marissa's just not having it. I don't think she entertains most conversations with Maddie. She kind of brushes her off as a kid and refuses to listen to her. But... Especially on, on this, because it's a more serious issue, and she's just like, get out of here, kid. Like, I literally don't have the energy to figure that out or, like, focus on that conversation with you right now. <laughs> um, she's mad her dad won't even try, though. She's just gonna go ahead and angrily chalk back into the house here. <laughs> the child does take no shits. She's great. <laughs> um, whoop. Uh, again, sorry, I will I will catch up on chat and probably just respond, like, in text and chat once we go to the next uh, short commercial break, okay? Uh, so, yeah, she's going to stomp in. She's going to run into Jacoba, Charlie's boyfriend over here. He's going to go ahead and um, say, oh, you know what? I meant to make them better friends. Uh, sorry, background work. Ignore that. Uh, <laughs> so, Charlie's boyfriend, Jacoba, is going to go ahead and um, he sees how angry she is and he's going to be like, Yo, what's up? What's up, little dude? Like, let's let's talk about it. They have a pretty good relationship, actually. Um, so Charlie only moved out to college a couple years ago, you know, and so Madison sort of grew up around her cousin, and her and Charlie are pretty close. They shared a room together. All all of them, Madison and Charlie, growing up together, like through Charlie's teen years at least, and. Um, She's gotten pretty close with Jacoba to Charlie's boyfriend because, you know, he's around a lot of the times now when Charlie's back at home. And he's a pretty chill dude. Uh, if he, if we, here, let's go look at her room really fast. Um, this is what used to be Charlie and Madison's room. Just Madison's room now. Uh, since Jacoba's an arts major, he actually, like, painted this whole, like, skyscape, like, all out across, like, all of her bedroom walls and painted all these little clouds for her, gave her, like, a little, you know... Uh, space bedroom just like she always wanted <laughs> uh, so yeah they're, they're pretty tight with each other <laughs> he's gonna be like what's the matter little dude like why are you so angry um, yeah oh look at them doing a little bro hug there that was cute uh, that's actually exactly what I pictured in my head I didn't think Sims did that I've never seen that before but I'm so happy that happened <laughs> uh, she's upset though she's flying off the handle a little bit <laughs> it's just like Ugh, it's just my parents. I'm just so tired of both of them disrespecting me in this household. <laughs> uh, Jacoba's not going to take offense to her yelling at him, you know. He's just going to be like, I feel that. I feel that little man. I get you. I, I get it. Um, you, you do you. Like, I support you, bro. Um, <laughs> she appreciates Jacoba's support, but she's, she's too angry now. She can't have this conversation. Uh, so he's just gonna tell her, like, yo, you know, we're doing, la me and Mo, we're doing laundry, of course, but, uh, your sister, I think, is upstairs, or sorry, not your sister, um, your cousin is upstairs, uh, they're basically sisters, they're that, they're that close, your cousin's upstairs, uh, talking to your Aunt Lorena, if you wanted to see her at all while she's over, and, um, Maddie's just gonna be like, thanks, but I just, I just want to go play in my room. I'm too upset. I don't even want to talk to her right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll see her before she leaves at least. So, you know what? Go hit. Go hit uni. Go hit your toys over here. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> ooh, we got some theorizing going on in chat. I'm so excited to catch up. Um, in just a minute, we're going to head to a break in like 
one more conversation and then I'll catch up on what you guys are saying. I'm excited to see what you're thinking though. Um, here, let's, let's have Lorena. I learned my lesson of trying to have conversations next to the easel here. <laughs> uh, why don't you come on over here? So Charlie's headed on up here to say hi to her mom. As I said, uh, she's going to go ahead give her a hug of course her and Lorena are really tight actually uh, Lorena's pretty close to both of her kids um their dad Justin the second isn't as close to them like they're okay but they're, it's not you know as close of a bond but Charlie and Lorena have like a really deep like mom dad uh what <laughs> mom daughter bond here uh so yeah go ahead and give your mom a hug and be like hey what uh What's up? I saw Marissa like stomping out of the house as usual. She all right? <laughs> Lorena's just gonna be like, oh, I don't know. Like I know she was supposed to talk to your grandparents, so um, maybe that conversation didn't go great. I'm not sure, but uh, she's she's usually upset about something, isn't she? Um, Charlie's gonna be like, yeah, for sure. Lorena's gonna let her know too that. Um, her dad went to check on the practice again, uh, so he's not here right now. If she wanted to say hi to him. Charlie's just gonna be like, oh, that's fine, that's whatever, like, uh, I, I just saw him last week, uh, I'm, I'm good, uh, he needs to, like, stop worrying about the practice, he knows that Chris is doing a really good job taking care of it, why is he so worried about it, um, let's have Lorena go ahead and take a sit as they chat as well, uh, look at them just, like, laughing and getting along, yeah, these two get along really well. Um, so yeah, lastly, Charlie's just gonna be like, yo, before I head down and, like, finish up, um, my laundry with, uh, Shikova and Mo down there, speaking of my, my brother Chris, where is Chris right now? I was gonna give him, like, his shirt back that he lent me to wear to that concert the other week while I was here, but I haven't seen him yet. I know it's a big house, but, you know, he usually says hi if he hears me come, I'm coming in with my gaggle of roommates. <laughs> And Lorraine is going to be like, oh, for sure, he should be back soon, but, um, he was out shopping with Amanda today, and, um, Charlie's just going to be like, Jesus Christ, again, weren't they out shopping, like, wasn't he just texting me from the dressing room, like, help text, like, a couple days ago, why did they go shopping so much? Uh, Lorraine is just going to be a little in defense of Amanda there, though be like you know she's a lot more high maintenance than you the girl likes her clothing uh i don't know as long as chris is willing to entertain it leave them be but hopefully they should be home soon they've been out for hours um and on that note we're gonna go ahead and check in on mr christopher and his fiance amanda as they're out doing some shopping We've just checked in on one side of the feuding families that uh, we follow in this series. We have checked in on what's happening at the Clark Estate, and um, we just heard from Lorena telling her daughter Charlie that um, her other child, Charlie's brother Christopher, is out shopping with his fiance Amanda, which is where we catch up with the two. Chris looking very bored sitting in this retail establishment. Um, also, if you're just joining, I'm not checking chat too much while we do the series. It's a new kind of very produced format that I hope is going well and that people are enjoying, but I'll be catching up on chat uh, in the little breaks, which we should be having another very short one in just a minute. This won't be, like, too long of a scene. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I love hearing all you guys' theories, though. I was literally laughing out loud during the break reading them all. It's so good. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, Chris is uh, over here super bored. Whoops, didn't unmute the game. <laughs> Look at him just like checking his nails. Uh, super tired. Uh, his fiance, Amanda, they've been together for a very long time now. Um, she's from another really prominent rich family in town, and he was kind of set up with her by the grandparents and sort of his parents. Lorena didn't care that much about like arranging him with someone prestigious, but uh, his father, Justin the Second, wants to appease his parents and. Um, Chris just kind of goes along with what the family wants him to do because he doesn't have much direction whoop, in his life so far. That's kind of the reason he's uh, become a resident doctor to his father's practice. Uh, he's not really sure how much he loves being a doctor, but it's what the, the family told him he should do. So here he is engaged to um, this girl, Amanda. Oh, hi, Jeffrey Landgrab. <laughs> here he is engaged to this girl, Amanda, in a job he's not sure uh, if he loves, not sure if he loves Amanda either, to be honest, but um, he definitely doesn't love having to take her shopping like four times a week. Uh, let's go ahead and get her to come on over here and um, actually can, is there like a, there's a show off outfit. Um, 
interaction, right? Uh, she's been trying on clothes all day. They've been gone for hours. Um, and Charlie was right. Like, they for sure just um, were... Oh, there's no show-off outfit. Okay, whatever. Let's go, um... Here, discuss board. <laughs> She's gonna go show off my outfit and be like, Ugh, why do you look tired? Like, it's barely been a few hours. Oh, she did have an outfit on. <laughs> uh, looks like she took it off to, to come see him. She's been trying things on. Let's go have her try on something else, actually, then. Uh, but this is Amanda. This is his fiancé of quite a few years now. I don't remember how many years I put in the Discord, but, um... <laughs> Uh, it looks like he's complimenting her, being like, look, you look beautiful in everything, Amanda, okay? Just, can we finally get going, please? We've been here for six hours. <laughs> we were just here three days ago. I don't care. <laughs> um, she's gonna go ahead and try it. You know, just one more, like, I promise that I'm almost done. Uh, what about, what about this one, okay? I want you to, like, think I look hot, okay? I can't buy something if you don't like it. Like, you need, and you've given me, like, hardly any opinions all day. Um, we're gonna actually have her, uh, go, go whine half-heartedly at him <laughs> and be like, Chris, please, <laughs> I didn't bring you along to sit like a lump on a log and just, like, complain all day. I brought you because I want your input on things, and this is a partnership. Uh, I think this is an argument they have a lot, you know, she uses the, this is a, supposed to be a partnership. You've been with me for, like, a decade, and you can't even, like, give me the time of day to, like, go shopping with me Ugh, you're like you're like really cute um because i don't know if i'd put up with you like <laughs> if you you know <laughs> continue to treat me like this uh and he's just gonna kind of half-heartedly chuckle on back <laughs> um they're finally uh about to check out i think though um oh uh so they're gonna go ahead um let's go let's purchase this outfit i think she liked this one better uh they're gonna both head on over here um stop stop flirting to get back in her good graces chris <laughs> um i think he knows how to at least woo her and like say what she wants to hear so it doesn't have to turn into like a huge ass argument you know god damn it a bunch of people i don't want to be showing up here <laughs> um let's frame it on the mannequin only um so yeah, she's gonna go ahead and purchase this outfit, you know. Oh, it'll be perfect for like a beach day or um, a honeymoon if, I don't know, you ever decide to like actually want to plan our wedding and actually marry me. Uh, <laughs> Chris is gonna just, he's literally gonna walk on out at, at this point. Because uh, <laughs> that's for sure something he's sick of hearing her saying. Uh, let's have let's have him head down. Oh no, the food, food stores are closed. They were there so late. They were gonna pick up dinner on the way home, but um, looks like they were out so late that even the food stalls are closed <laughs> we'll still have him uh head on down the road here i guess um and she's gonna follow right on after him and be like where do you think you're going like why are you ditching me you can't just leave me in the store here pretend charlie didn't just show up in the store um <laughs> uh yeah he's he's really tired of this though and she's just gonna still complain about her him not marrying her yet you know they have been engaged six years uh, and she's just gonna be like, uh, let's have her actually chew him out a little bit. Let's, let's have an argument. Uh, they, these two argue quite a bit, to be completely honest. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, argue. There we go. Um, argue. You know what? We'll do career because, um, he's gonna be like, listen, Amanda, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. Like, I am not super you know i'm not like a full-fledged doctor yet i'm still in my residency i told you once i am like a fully licensed doctor and i you know can can practice at somewhere that's not my you know fucking father's own practice and i can like go on out and make a name for myself a little bit more then we can get married like i just want to establish myself before you know putting all this time and money into like a huge wedding like you want uh, before, like, I'm completely settled in life and ready to settle down. Stop pressuring me. Um, she's gonna bite right back, of course, and just say, like, oh, that is always your excuse. It has been years. If it's not the residency, it's that you have to finish medical school. And if it's, you know, that not that, then it's you have to get into medical school. And I swear to God, like, you know, it took you long enough to finally propose to me. I mean, I thought that it was a done deal when your grandparents, like, basically, uh, you know, arranged this in the first place, and, um, thank God you at least fell in love with me. I thought that would even fast-track it faster, that we would be married by now, but you're constantly just complaining and trying
trying to change the conversation every time I try and talk about the wedding. And if you don't, like, actually marry me soon, then I swear to God there's going to be hell to pay. You know, listen, your family's powerful. You know how fucking powerful my family is, too. So don't, don't try it, Mr. Christopher Clark, all right? You should be lucky you're with me. And just for that... Um, we're going shopping again tomorrow because, um, I'm feeling like I need a few more clothing options to, uh, make up for how rudely you treated me tonight. Uh, you better, you better shape up or I'm gonna, you don't want me, like, telling, uh, le not even just my family, but let alone your own grandparents about it, huh? And, uh, I don't know, Chris is kind of a pushover and I just don't think he wants to argue anymore, so... He's just going to agree, stop the conversation, and they're just going to go ahead and um, head home as Amanda looks pretty upset and just really frustrated of having to deal with someone so um, disrespectful towards her and, like, you know, so difficult to deal with. But um, for true love, she'll stick it out, you know. She'll she'll tolerate it for now because um, that's this is the path she's supposed to be on. She's going to be a bride, and that's final. And as uh, she she walks away, as this night goes ahead and closes out, um, we will be be done checking in on the Clarks for this episode. And as morning dawns on the next day, we're gonna go ahead and check in on our other family that we met. Um, we we've seen how Justin Clark's family has uh, grown and turned out. We're gonna go ahead and look in on Robert Winston and uh, his family. Uh, here we are. It's a brand new morning. Um, it is bright and early. And uh, before we go ahead and head to um, Full Winston Manor and check in on Robert's full family, uh, we're going to go ahead and check on someone that is part of the family but has decided to not live in the manor like most of the other family members. And that is um, Rosalie. So uh, Robert Winston's son, Brent, who is the middle child, um, he, he actually knocked up his high school girlfriend, Aaliyah, and, um, had a child out of wedlock when he was, like, 16, and this is her, so that was a long time ago, Rosalie is now 28, this is her little tiny home that she has across town from her family, you know, and, um, they don't, they don't treat her the best, so she doesn't really talk to them that much really here she is she's tending to her garden um she runs her own little at-home garden and flower arranging business um and this is her, this is her dog bandit uh taking a nap on the stoop he usually sticks right by her they're like the best of friends and um she she kind of hasn't she has an okay relationship with her dad he's a little distant just because um he's a bit of a uh, uh he's he's struggled with drugs and addiction in the past so he hasn't been the most present in her life but the rest of the family like her grandparents like Robert uh Winston her grandfather and other family members don't don't really pay much attention to her unless you know they can use her as a uh, in, in the press basically of like oh and look at our um half half black illegitimate granddaughter we love her so we're really good people um for sure like they kind of really only use her to seem like really good altruistic people uh when they can but when it comes to the personal lives uh they kind of don't treat her like part of the family so she's she tends to keep her distance she's not a very materialistic person either so she keeps to her own in this little tiny house over here Oop, let's keep the walls up for this series uh she has an adorable little house over here we can see more of it in a minute but She's doing her morning gardening, of course. Uh, why don't you, here, let's go say hi to Bandit. Let's say good morning to Bandit. Uh, go hug your little puppy. And um, she's going to have a visitor this morning. Not not Brent. Brent usually isn't up this early in the morning. It's only 7 a.m. But uh, her mom, actually, Aaliyah, is stopping by to hang out and have a little chat, catch up with her daughter. Uh, so this will be Brent's ex-girlfriend from high school. Uh, they haven't spoken in uh, too long a time, but... Rosalie and her mom, Aaliyah, have a pretty good relationship. They're pretty close with each other. They, um, they stay, uh, <laughs> they stay in contact pretty often. Here she is. Here's Aaliyah walking on up. So she's gonna come give her daughter a big hug, of course. Um, 
say, hey, they don't get to see each other too, too often. Aaliyah lives a bit far away from Rosalie and, like, the rest of the family members. She lives a bit out of town, but, uh, you know, she drives in every few weeks when she can. They talk on the phone a lot, though. So they can have a big hug and they can talk. And uh, there's Rosie wanted to invite Aaliyah over to have... Um, a conversation she wanted her mom's input on some things because Rosie's been um, thinking about a lot of stuff in her life. Uh, she's she's pretty happy with her where she's at. Uh, she's happy with her little gardening business. It's going pretty well. I'm gonna have them. You know what? Let's go. Let's sit and chat at the little um, our little wicker chairs over here. Bandit running in ahead of them. Uh, they're gonna have a little chat because she feels really fulfilled with her her business um, on the side. Rosie does actually volunteer at a children's daycare. That's why there's some children's paintings on the wall. These are from some of the daycare kids that really like Miss Rosie. And um, she's really enjoyed volunteering there in her free time the past couple years, uh, getting to know all these children and stuff. And she's never really found someone that she wants to be in a relationship with. She's not. That's not really been her focus for uh, as long as she can remember. Um, she stayed around here or there, but she just hasn't found anyone she really wants to settle down with. But she's realized that kind of one of the only holes in her life right now is that she loves these kids, but she kind of wants a kid of her own. And uh, it, it's sort of scary because she would be a single mom, but she's not really with anyone. She's already 28, though, and she does want to raise a child of her own. So she wanted to talk to her mom about that today and be like, hey, I just wanted your thoughts because kind of here's what I'm thinking. Um, I really want a baby of my own, and I know there's a lot of options. Um, I've been looking into things. Adoptions are uh, really expensive. Like, all the options are pretty expensive. Like, adoptions um, more expensive. I have found, like, a really reliable, like, sperm bank in town, though. Um, like, a place that <laughs> has a sperm bank. And um, they, you know, I've been talking with them, and they're willing to, like, cut me a, a deal. Like, we can get on a payment plan or something. But, um, I'm thinking of, yeah, just finding, like, the donor. They're supposed to be sending me the, like, booklet of samples. I don't really know how it works, but they're going to be sending me, like, the stats of, like, the different people I can um, choose the, like, DNA from, I guess. And then, yeah, I think I'm going to get pregnant, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, she's kind of awkward, so I think she's sort of stumbling through and not exactly knowing all of the details about how it, it works or, like, medical things and not knowing how to explain it to her mom that well, but her mom's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Rosie, of course, and I think that's a wonderful idea. You are so caring. You've always been so compassionate. You always talk about your daycare kids with, like, such love and joy in your voice whenever you tell me about them and tell me stories on the phone about them. And, like, you are so sweet, and I think that that is a wonderful idea. You would be a great mom, and I fully support you. And, um, you know, I don't really uh, have a ton of money myself, but I, I'm, I'm well off. Like, uh, if you need any help, please let me know. I would be happy to help you, you know, in your endeavor if you need any financial help or a babysitting of course like oh my gosh wait I'm gonna have a grandkid I think it's kind of hitting her you know <laughs> like oh my god I'm I might have a grandkid soon um that would be wonderful and Aaliyah is of course gonna support her being a single mom uh Aaliyah did most of the raising of Rosie herself I mean Brent was sort of in the picture but those were his heavy drug years when she was young so he barely parented anyways uh, so Leah, of course, thinks that she can do it on her own. She's very self-sufficient on her own in her little tiny home here. She already takes care of a dog by herself, so I think she would get on fine, and Aaliyah thinks so too, and I know that it makes Rosalie really happy to hear that her mom supports her decision and will support her um, through it if she needs it. And uh, as usually happens when Aaliyah's over here, the conversation's gonna turn a little bit to... Um, Rosie's dad, you know, they are talking about Rosie, how she would be a single mom, and, um, since Ali is not in too much contact with Brent, but she knows Rosalie talks to him whenever he's around, she is, uh, they're exes, but, um, they don't, they don't hate each other, Aaliyah definitely still cares about him, and wants to make sure he's okay, so she's just gonna go ahead and ask Rosalie how he's doing, like, is your dad all right, like, have you heard from him lately? I don't really know where he's at in life right now. Um, do you, like, just is he okay? I don't need all the details, but 
you know, we always like to check in and make sure that he's uh, living <laughs> and doing all right for himself. And Rosie's gonna go ahead and answer and say that, yeah, he's, he's okay, you know, he still has his battles. I haven't spoken to him in, in a bit, actually, but um, he texts me a meme every now and then to let me know that he's still alive, I guess. Um, I think he's living back at home now in the Winston Manor, so I don't know how well that's going for him. You know, he doesn't really get along with Grandma and Grandpa that well. They don't really approve of a lot of the choices he's made, and Leah kind of rolls her eyes at that she knows that like she's one of those choices, <laughs> but uh, Rosie's gonna sure, yeah, you know, he, he's okay, but I haven't um, actually seen him in a bit and we're, we're gonna leave them they're probably gonna hang out for a bit and like chat for a while the neighbors are coming so before we can uh <laughs> the neighbors are gonna bother us let's let's head in and check on brent ourselves and the rest of our family so we're gonna go ahead and our last stop for the night is going to be checking in on the winston manor and seeing the robert and the rest of his family themselves now that we've seen his um illegitimate granddaughter and how she's doing <laughs> out at her own little home. Let's head back to the manor and see how the full family is doing. So. We now cut across town to another statuesque home, similar to the Clark Estate, although different in style. We are seeing the Winston Manor, the mansion that Robert Winston has acquired and raised his whole family in, along with his loving wife, Juliet. Uh, unlike the Clark estate, most of the Winston children are still living at home. The eldest child, Robert II, of course, who has taken over the Insurzo Company in Robert's old age, still lives here with his wife and many children who have uh, taken up some of the other bedrooms in the home. The youngest child, Julia, is still having a bit of a rough time after the death of her infant child, so her and her husband still live there, and just recently, the middle child, Brent, Rosalie's father, as she mentioned, not quite knowing where he's at. Well, he's not necessarily doing as great as maybe she's thinking or at least hoping that he's doing. As middle child, Brent has had to move back into the manor. He's gotten his life together a couple times in the past, but it always seems to fall apart. And that is where we find him in this day and age as well. In this shabby little corner of the garage with only a few pieces of luggage to his name, Brent Winston is kind of falling off the wagon and really having a hard time dealing with his uh, battle with addiction at the time. So he's a bit down on his luck. He doesn't have much going on in his life and he's really struggling with his addiction at the moment. And so he is just kind of living in the corner of his family home's garage, trying to figure out what he's doing with his life, trying to get back on his feet, but still having a really difficult time getting himself together and doing so. So we saw him get yelled at by Justin in the prologue there. Here's Robert Winston, all grown up. An 80-year-old man. 81-year-old? I think, no, he's 80. He's the 81-year-old one. <laughs> Justin's one year older. Um, Brent's father, Robert Winston here, who's gonna yell at his son to finally get up. Oh, look at him pulling the covers over his head, trying to <laughs> refuse to do that. His dad's gonna actually just, like, yell at him first thing in the morning. Um, and be like, uh, let's see, what can- here, just yell at him. And be like, hey, Weren't you supposed to go out and finally look for jobs today? You've put it off so many days in a row. Um, you need to finally go out and, like, start, you know, making a living for yourself. Stop embarrassing the family name. Um, you are still not up. It's past 12 p.m. now, and you smell so badly. You, like, you stink like weed. I, you need to fucking clean yourself up um, if you don't want to live in my garage for the rest of your life. <laughs> Uh, Brent's just, uh, pretty upset. I don't know, he doesn't have too much of a response. He's usually pretty depressed and or really drugged out, which he definitely is right now. He's very high. And, um, it's not really about it. It's like, oh, sorry, yeah, I guess the time kind of got away from me. I was up really late last night writing my novel, you know. And Robert's just gonna be like, oh, that damn novel that you're always writing. Um, you know, you've been writing it for, like, ten years now, is it? It's not gonna become anything, so... Uh, you can't just act like that's going to end up being your job and do nothing in the interim. Uh, shape up. <laughs> and they're gonna, they're gonna stop talking. We're gonna leave Brent to clean himself up a little bit. 
uh, out in the garage here. Robert's gonna go ahead and um, head head inside to um, the kitchen here. Um, and then over in the kitchen, let's see. Let me just make sure that, uh, oh, is there a conversation happening in the kitchen here? Um, let, let's see. I think that uh, there is something that um, Robert's gonna go ahead and walk in on. Don't pay any attention to whatever argument I just clicked on if you saw it. It doesn't mean anything. But um, if we go ahead and follow him into the kitchen here, we're gonna see uh, Juliet and Catalina are actually hanging out in the kitchen of <laughs> the Winston Manor here. Jenna putting her sense knowledge to use in the chat. But uh, looks like Juliet and Catalina are having a bit of an argument here. Now, Juliet on the right is Robert's wife of 50 years. She's usually a very meek person, so this is kind of out of character for her. But uh, her and Robert's sister are in an argument right now. Uh, this is Catalina. This is Robert's uh, younger sister by a couple years, and she's moved into the manor right now to help take care of him in his old age, kind of like Justin II's helping out his dad as a doctor. Um, Catalina doesn't really have any credentials, but uh, she's here to help take care of him. She's pretty old herself, but she's taken a lot better care of her body throughout the years than Robert, so she's here to take care of him and make sure that He's uh, taking care of his health. Uh, they were never really close. They aren't really close now, but um, she's she kind of left in her early 20s and hasn't been around for about 50 years. So she barely knows Juliet, and um, no one's really explained. She's not really explained like why she knew <laughs> like that Robert's health was kind of deteriorating, uh, or to be back, or why she's back, or where she's been. She's a bit of a cryptid, but she's back now. Um, now a widow. She she left and eloped with uh, her lover, and now a single woman back in the household <laughs> uh, to take care of Robert. But no one's gonna really ask about where where she's been or anything. I don't think you're going to get an answer if you do. So Juliet's pretty angry after that conversation. Uh, she's going to go ahead and stomp on out of the room, storm out of the kitchen, and Robert's going to have a little conversation with Catalina. Now, him and his sister don't really get along that well either, but uh, they, they tolerate each other, you know, they're civil. Um, they're going to go ahead and uh, let's see, what should, what should we do? Let's just... We'll have a deep conversation, and we'll have her be like, Wow, geez, what was that that I just walked in on? Um, I, like, I've literally never seen anyone be able to argue with Juliet in the way that you argue with her. And uh, Catalina's just gonna be like, Ugh, yeah, I don't know. She, you know she has a problem with me ever since I've showed up. I don't really know why. Um, like, I know that she was arranged to... Oh, don't worry, that was not, like, a romantic woohoo thing. I know it's the same motion. He was just, like, complimenting her. <laughs> um, let's hear. Let's just have another deep conversation, actually. But, yeah. Catalina's just gonna say, uh, Oh, God, I know that Juliet was, like, married off to, you know, your old ass, like, when she was really young and didn't really get to live her own life. Uh, sorry she's jealous that I got to skip out on my stuffy family and live the life of a free woman on the road for decades. Like, she's probably just jealous of the life I've gotten to live. Um, but that's not my problem. I don't know why she, she's just always starting arguments with me. Don't look to me. You know, I, I'm all about peace and love, baby. Don't fucking come at me for starting arguments with my wife. Go talk, or with your wife, go talk to her. Uh, and Robert's just gonna be like, I don't care that much. You know, it's your guys' personal relationship. It's not really any of my business. I'm just saying it's amusing to me that you can argue with her like no one else. I've barely heard her voice, like Juliet's voice, raise as loud as it uh, goes anytime she talks with you. Uh, and they're just kind of chuckling about it. It's not too serious of a conversation, you know. But Catalina's gonna say, "All right, yeah, I'll, whatever, old man. Uh, it's time for your meds." So we're gonna go ahead and uh, send Catalina and um, Robert into him and Juliet's bedroom here, so she can give him uh, his meds. And we have uh, the family portrait and Juliet and Robert's old wedding picture up on the wall, just like there was one in Justin and Rona's bedroom. Um, and if we go ahead and catch back up with Juliet here, I think she's gonna just try and calm herself down in the foyer of their house here. Um, there's a bigger picture of the the mural that you have seen during the commercial break screens anyways. 
Um, hi, Shia. A little break for an actual kitten appearance. Ah. Hello. I love you. You can stay there if you want, but I'm not going to pay much attention to you tonight. <laughs> Uh, so as Juliet uh, go ahead, goes ahead and calms herself down a little bit here, um, someone on else is gonna be coming on in the front door here. And that is Robert the second himself. So we saw Brett the middle child, Brent the middle child. This is Robert the second, um, Robert and Juliet's eldest child. And like Marissa on the Clark side, um, Robert the second is the one who has taken over the uh, family business for Robert, so they also own a private security company called Insurzo? Is that what- hold on, let me check my Discord just to double check, I don't want to get that wrong. I'm pretty sure, yeah, Securevo is the Clark family <laughs> private security business, and Insurzo is the Winston family private security business, correct? Yes, I remembered my company names I came up with. <laughs> so like Marissa, Robert II has been given the new title of CEO and uh, owner of the business in his father's retirement days here. Um, he's, a, he's a bit older, you know, he's like about a decade older than Marissa. They are like competing in or private security companies and of course uh, feuding families. Uh, as I said, the um, whole feud amongst the families has definitely been passed down through the generations. They're all aware of each other. They all hate each other by default. Um, Robert, Robert the second kind of takes on the mantle of taking care of a lot of the family, though financially at least. Now that he owns the company, Robert's much less involved less involved in the goings of this company than Justin and Marissa's running of it. Uh, we're gonna let Juliet stop calling herself down in the mirror, though. And Robert has a pretty good relationship with most of his family. Actually, uh, they they do like him. He's a pretty charismatic dude. Uh, he can be kind of stern and uh, scary to people who don't know him. But to his family, he's he's pretty nice. We're gonna go ahead and have him try and calm his mom down though and be like whoa whoa are you okay you're usually not this upset <laughs> what's going on buddy you all right um <laughs> uh, i love you guys in chat <laughs> uh, we can definitely like i'll actually talk and respond more to things in discord afterwards if you guys want to discuss anything that happens anything you might be thinking now that you've seen them um, but yeah he's gonna calm his mom down a little and juliet's just gonna be like oh it's fine sweetie i'm not it's okay, I'm not that upset, thank you for, you know, oh, you're so wonderful, you're always here for me, to, like, calm me down, it's just that, you know, uh, your aunt is just getting under my skin, as usual, don't worry about it, you know, we just don't get along, um, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go on, um, a, a walk here, we'll, we'll just add Catalina on a walk to calm herself down, uh, <laughs> I don't know, here, here's the front of the manor, if you would like to see it, uh, without all the walls up, at least, so, yeah. Okay, uh, Juliet's just gonna go ahead and go on a little walk to, to cool down. She likes being outside. She likes kind of being lost in her own thoughts a bit. Uh, and Robert the second's gonna be like, okay, just be be careful, mom. Make sure you have your phone on you. You know, uh, text me if you need anything. I'm gonna go ahead and check in on the rest of the family. Uh, do you happen to know where where my wife is? And she's gonna say, oh, I think I saw um, Amy upstairs in the loft with your with your sons and playing. So Robert's gonna go ahead and head up there. Let's check in on Amy actually. So. Uh, we're gonna get a little puppet show going before we show off Chadwick's bedroom up here. So we're gonna go ahead and perform a- let's do search for the notebook scratcher or whatever. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, have him perform a show for his mom here. So we have little Chadwick, uh, you just saw him. We'll- we'll get him out of the puppet house once Robert comes up here. <laughs> show off his face a little better. Um, this is Robert II's wife, Amy, uh, big time lawyer woman. Now their relationship is a little strained right now because he's been running the family business. She's a high profile lawyer. So, you know, they they don't get to see each other too often. They've both been really busy lately. Um and she's she's kind of a a stoic person. She's kind of got a a, a blank. She's not very emotional. She <laughs> but she does really care about her children and so when she does have some free time on the weekend like it is she likes to spend some time with them. Um, I'm not sure what this little puppet show that Chad's putting on here is. But look at that. Uh, Robert's on home for the day now that it's getting to be about 5 p.m. Uh, this is their other son, Tyler, here. Chadwick is their 10-year-old son that's in the 
puppet theater right now. This is their little two-year-old Tyler, the child that they've just recently had. Um, we will see him around the house, but there won't be too much focus on him as he is a very small child. Um, Chadwick hearing that his dad has come on home, though, we're gonna go ahead and have him stop, stop the pup puppet show abruptly, <laughs> jump on up and come hug his dad here. Come hug him lovingly. Uh, go ahead there. <laughs> Tyler is very cute. I love it. Um, and yes, this is uh, Chadwick's bedroom up here, actually. He's got the whole top third floor loft area to himself. Uh, he's got a pretty grand area with all these little, you know, outshoots. He can look out the windows. Oh, we don't want to miss him hugging here. Uh, so there we go. He gave his, his dad a big hug. Um, let's do another one. I don't feel like I showed that very well. <laughs> um, he's just so excited to see his dad home, you know? Uh, Chad and his dad are pretty... <laughs> Chad and his dad. Chad and his dad are pretty close. Uh, Robert the the second here has been is kind of you know grooming <laughs> little Chadwick to be his replacement once Robert reaches old age like his own father did to him. And um, Chadwick has been pretty perceptive so far. Like he thinks it's a really great honor that his his dad is gonna entrust him with like the insurzo big company that. Um, has sort of been treated like royalty his whole fam- uh, his whole life. Uh, that he's gonna one day be entrusted with it is a really big deal, and he's, he's ready to take on that responsibility when the day comes. Um, Amy's just been sitting back letting, you know, the sons have a, a moment with- with Robert, but she's gonna go on over and at least kiss his cheek and say hello, welcome from work, welcome home from work, and ask if, um, he- he's gonna be able to- hang out tomorrow because they do have they did have some dinner plans but um their their dinner plans don't often I, is there not kiss cheek <laughs> or am i just not seeing it um oh there we go kiss cheek they their dinner plans do fall to the wayside sometimes because they are both really busy so it's been a long time since they've gotten to actually have a date night together Oop, the conversation seems to have gone a little sour why don't you and your brother go play over here oh this is um Chadwick's rat that I haven't named, but he has a pet rat as well. <laughs> uh, go, go play with your brother. Here, let me pause it, actually. <laughs> go play dolls with Tyler. Uh, so yeah, Amy's gonna say, hi, honey, welcome home from work. I just wanted to double check on our dinner plans tomorrow night before I, uh, forget about it, you know. Robert the second's gonna say, oh god, I'm so sorry, like, I, I really do miss having date nights like we used to before, um, we had so many kids, but I, oh god, something came up at the office again, and I just think it's gonna be another late night, and, uh, I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it, so it's probably a safer bet if we just cancel, but we can, we'll do something soon, I promise, we can do something, which... I think she's probably heard that uh, every day for the last year or so, and it's not like she hasn't said that to him a lot as well, though. She cancels just as much as he does, and she's actually going to say to him, like, oh, thank goodness, actually, I really miss our date nights, too. I would love to, but uh, I actually, one of my really high-profile clients called me and said that they needed to discuss something, so I'm going to be busy tomorrow night working on that case as well, so that's such, oh, that's such a relief that I don't have to break your heart about it. Cool. We'll reschedule for another night for sure. Uh, rinse and repeat as this usually goes on uh, in in their lives. <laughs> so Amy's going to continue playing with the kids up here and Robert's going to say, awesome, glad we're on the same page. We're always just on the same page about everything. Let me let me go check on the other people. Have, I wanted to, you know, check in on my sister. Have you seen Julia yet today? And then Amy's going to say, no, I haven't actually, but you know where she probably is if you want to go check in on her. And Robert II's gonna say, I know exactly what you mean, so let me let me go at least make sure that she's eaten today. And let's let's go ahead and head downstairs actually and check in on Julia herself. Now Julia is the youngest child of Robert and Juliet. And uh she's 
she's had a bit of a, a rough life. Uh, she found the love of her life, Terrence, when she was in um, business school. She married really young. He's a lot older than her, but they they love each other a lot, and she knows that's her soulmate. And she was so excited to get pregnant 13 years ago and have a little baby. They had a little baby girl named Annabelle, and then unfortunately, um, Annabelle did die of SIDS when she was three months old. And uh, Julia's not really recovered since, and as you see here, they, they've never really redecorated the nursery. So this is Annabelle's nursery that is still exists. It's right through Julia and Terrence's bedroom. And a lot of the days, Julia just kind of spends her time sitting in this nursery, looking at stuff. Uh, she doesn't really either leave the bed or this nursery that often. Uh, she's usually pretty distant, and you can just kind of find her staring off into the distance. She used to have a lot of life in her, but when she lost the life of her child, that took a lot out of her, and she's really never recovered. Uh, obviously, that's still like a heavy burden on her heart, and the family just does what they can. Robert II really tries to just to like, make sure that she's taken care of. He knows that Terrence does his best, but like that's his baby sister, you know? He's gonna make sure that she at least eats because she barely does. That's part of why she's so skinny, is she doesn't really take care of herself. She just kind of mourns the loss of her child. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we all like Julia, this is what I meant by get your t tissues ready. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna, here, go give Julia a really big hug, and Robert's just gonna go ahead and check in on her for the day, like he usually does. He tries to see her at least once a day um, if he's home and and has a minute. Uh, sorry, the camera really hates the nursery. <laughs> I don't know why, but the roofing situation around it makes it awful to try and get an angle in here. Let's just cue up a conversation and hope they keep talking and don't start arguing. <laughs> Ask her about her day so I can go into tab camera mode. So, there we go. Give her a big hug. Uh, ask how she's been. Say, hey, sis. How you doing? How's, uh, how's life today? Besides the obvious, uh, did you make sure that you got a, you got a meal in you? She's just gonna say, oh, um, yeah, I think, I think so. I don't really remember, but I don't, I don't feel that hungry anyways. Uh, thanks for checking in on me. I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine, you know. You know me, I'm as okay as I'm gonna be. And I, that's not really an answer that I think satisfies Robert that uh, well, but he knows he's not gonna get that much out of her, really. So he's he's just gonna say, you know, I, I understand that. Um, just make sure make sure you eat tomorrow then, just in case you didn't eat today. And uh, you know I love you. Let me know if you if you need anything. You know I'm here for you. And uh, she he's just gonna really make sure that she knows that <laughs> he's here for her if she needs. And in the middle of this conversation here, actually, um, oh look at that. He's even bringing a smile. Oh, I'm so sorry about the camera. Bringing a little smile to her face, even though it's short-lived. Uh, he always did used to be able to make her laugh. Um, Terrence is going to walk in, though. This is Julian's husband, Terrence, here. And he doesn't really like how much Robert the Second babies her. He thinks that uh, Julia doesn't really benefit from being um, placated that much. Uh, and that she just needs someone to, like, you know, tell, be a little more forceful with her. So he's going to tell Robert the second to go ahead and get out of here. You don't need to, like, worry about her and dote on her so much. She's not a child herself. She's my wife. I've got her. It's fine. I'm making sure that she's taken care of. Don't worry about it. Uh, and Robert the second's not amused by that, but him and Terrence don't have that great of a rapport. This happens a lot with these two. He will go ahead and get on out of here, though. He'll stomp away angrily. Here, we'll, let, we'll make sure he's angry. Feeling angry. <laughs> Go ahead and stomp on out into the hallway here. Um, and Julia's just going to say, Oh, it's it's okay. Like, both of you, you know, I don't mind um, Robert checking in on me. You're both, you're both sweet. And, oh, that's Amy, not Julia. <laughs> uh, you're both sweet for checking in on me. And, you know, I appreciate how much both of you take care of me. Like, it's okay. Don't fight. You know, I don't like when you guys fight. Uh, so... <laughs> Terrence looks pretty satisfied with himself getting what he wanted, though, as Robert leaves the room. He's gonna even tell Julia here, like, 
you know, you can tell him that you don't want him to, like, baby you like that. I know he still thinks of you as, like, a little kid, I feel like. He still treats you like his child sister, but... Oh, and it looks like they're gonna go, uh, <laughs> have some fun themselves, and so if that's what they'd like to do, you know what? Only autonomous action will leave on for the night, sure. If Julia and Terrence would like to go sleep with each other, fine by me. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, if we catch back out with, uh, Robert in the hallway here- oh, wait, hold on, never mind. I'm gonna- I actually am gonna cancel them, because I don't know where they're about to go with who, because they're walking out of their own bedroom, so help. <laughs> Uh, the last place that Robert's gonna go ahead and check in on for the night before he goes and gets to his work that he needs to finish up before heading back to the office tomorrow is that he's gonna go ahead and head into his last kid's room, his daughter Samantha. So this is their eldest child, Samantha. She is, uh, 16 and this is her boyfriend Maxwell. She's the head cheerleader at, uh, Northridge Academy, I believe is what I named her, uh, private high school that she goes to. And, um, of course, Maxwell's the star quarterback, you know, the typical popular kids, the typical, um, teen popular kid relationship, of course, uh, but she's really in love with Maxwell. They've been dating about a year or so. Um, he is, like, a year older than her. She's a junior, he's a senior, like, he's not that much older, <laughs> but, um, he's over hanging out as he does most nights. Um, dad's gonna walk in, though. And just go ahead and check in on her. He likes Maxwell. It's not like that weird for him to know that Max is over hanging out or for him to see her uh, kiss him. He is kind of like upset because of the way Terrence talked to him right now. But he just wants to, let's see, can we just check in? How do we, uh, let's just ask about her day, you know. He's just kind of making the rounds, checking in on the whole family as he's home from work, so... Just wants to make sure that, you know, like, hey, did you have a good day at school? Like, are you, um, did you do your, do your homework at least? Do both of you do your homework? Um, I'm sure, Maxwell, I'm sure that your parents pay a lot of money to, uh, have you go to the same fancy academy, so you better be putting in your worth. Uh, no, nothing too harsh, just typical dad things. <laughs> Sam's gonna say, yeah, of course, dad, don't worry, you know, that, like, um, I have to stay, especially with all the AP classes that I'm taking, uh, I have to stay on top of it. Of course, you know that I am. Um, and, and I've already done my piano practice for the day, too, so don't worry about it. Max and I were just planning um, our prom king and queen campaign, so you can get out of here. We have a lot of work to do still, so go on and get out of here, Dad. <laughs> and then Robert's gonna be like, okay, fine, I get it. Um, of course he campaigned for prom king when he was their age, too. He understands, uh... And that is what they are actually talking about. That wasn't a ploy to get Dad out of the room. Uh, prom is coming up. It is on the horizon. And the the golden couple of the high school, of course, Samantha would love to win prom queen, being, like, valedictorian and head cheerleader and uh, being, like, an award-winning award -winning piano soloist. As you see, she's got a lot of medals for a lot of different accolades and accomplishments over here. Uh, the crowning moment, like, on her, uh, high school career would be to win prom king and queen. Now, she's not a senior, but Max is a senior, and if she's gonna win prom queen, she has to win it with the love of her life, of course, Maxwell. So she wants to, you know, he's taking her to senior, his senior prom, obviously. So she wants to just try and win prom king and queen with him at his prom. Um, so let's, deep conversation, this is serious business to her. I think it is to Maxwell too, he's really invested in this, um, <laughs> and invested in making Samantha happy, I think, um, most, most of all. Yeah, ignore their massive hands, I have a mod on so that they're a little shorter as teens, but it doesn't make the hands smaller. <laughs> so they're gonna go ahead and plan all of their things, oh, she's getting texts from all of her other friends, of course, um. Wondering when they're going to announce their campaign. Um, I think they're planning at least a couple viral uh, videos, Instagram posts. I don't really know how the kids use internet today to get school things. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't have their campaign planned out. I'll be honest with you, but they're confident that they're going to win no matter what. That's just. That's what their uh, main goal is right now. <laughs> All the life of the teenagers to be winning prom king and queen being the, their only worry. Thank you for the follow, Angel Kush, if you're still around. It just popped up on my follower widget, uh, so if I missed you, sorry. But, um, thank you for the follow if you're still here. Um, oh goodness, let me just make sure I'm right on schedule. We are almost done with the episode for the night. Don't worry. 
Um, oh gosh, it is like 9 p.m. in game. All right, it is definitely uh, a nighttime then. So I think that it's uh, about time for Max to leave. He's gonna be like, oh, whoops, yeah, you're. It's getting a little late. Um, I think we've come up with some good ideas today. Good brainstorming sesh. Um, uh, always, always appreciate your intellect. You're so smart and wonderful. Don't worry. Like we'll hang out tomorrow. We'll talk. To, I'll see you at school tomorrow. Um, I love you, but I'm gonna head on out for the night. And so, little Samantha's gonna uh, go ahead and turn in for the night herself. It's about nighttime. I think everyone's getting ready to turn in. We're gonna actually get everyone to go to sleep. Actually, so let's get Robert and Juliet to head to bed. In their bedroom, Catalina. It looks like Robert and Catalina have just been ch catching up all day. Um, this is Catalina's bedroom over here. It's actually the study of the house, but they're gonna. She's gonna go um, sleep over here. She's been staying, and she's kind of making a mess of the study. But this is where she's been resting for her her time here. Uh, I don't know, Brent. Brent, you know what? You can just stay in your garage. You do you, buddy. Um. And then uh, we'll let the kids get to bed too. It's about time that they get some rest. Here's Tyler's little nursery. We'll send him to bed. And we'll send Chad to bed in his little loft up here. Um, Amy's gonna go ahead and come on downstairs and just go and get ready for bed, you know. She's gonna go take a bath, get ready for bed. Take a bath with some soak, some rose petals, sure. As um, Robert's gonna head into bed as well. He's gonna go change into uh, his pajama. Oh, well. Producer, note here really quick. I'm gonna change them into their pajamas. Um, I didn't plan any outfits other. Oh, computer froze for a second. <laughs> Oh god, what is happening? <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, can you not change into outfits at, at uh, closets? Whatever. If if you see them in their sleepwear, I didn't plan their sleepwear, so if it looks really janky, I apologize. <laughs> Just roll with it for this for the end of the episode here. Um, Robert the Second's gonna go ahead and head into bed while Amy is uh, getting her, her relaxing bath for the night in. And heading to bed. Oh, he's stomping in. He's still a bit upset from his conversation with uh, Terrence there. And um, bef before he goes to bed, once he knows that Amy is nice and safely in in her her bath for the night, though, he's he's actually gonna have a bit of a cry himself in bed here and cry it out because, as I said, Robert sort of takes care of the whole family and he feels like he kind of has to keep a strong front up for everyone because there's a lot going on but he it's a lot on his plate keeping up the company making sure all of his kids are okay making sure his little sister is okay making sure his connection with his wife isn't deteriorating too much even though that they never see each other uh it's a lot on him it's a lot of responsibility weighing on him and I don't think that he feels like he does a good enough job at juggling all these balls. And so a lot of nights he kind of cries himself to sleep and uh, has a little bit of a panic about all of the things that he has on his plate. But he always does it out of sight of Amy. He doesn't want his wife to know that he's like that upset over things. Um, or that, you know, he's really worried about losing her or losing the love of his family if he isn't perfect all of the time. Oh, his pajamas aren't too bad, if not a little weird. <laughs> and checking back in with Samantha really fast, actually. Oh, okay. We're gonna... Hi, butler. Could you leave the room, please? <laughs> um, I don't... <laughs> Technical difficulties. Could you go somewhere? Uh, just go away. Samantha's like, hi. Um, what is the- I literally don't know the butler's name. Whatever. Um, I- I'm gonna get ready for bed now. If you could go ahead and- and leave, that'd be great. Uh, and across the hall from Robert's bedroom, um, as soon as Max left, we have kind of a similar scene in Samantha's bedroom here. Like I said, she's head cheerleader, she's valedictorian, she has to keep a- above a 4.0. She is like a star piano soloist, she has to, uh, practice piano, like, for so many hours a day. Um, she has a lot of- responsibility to uphold the family name and be this amazing person and keep things you know going with her boyfriend and stuff and she also just feels an immense amount of pressure on her and so similar to her father 
Uh, it's a lot for her to handle, and a lot of nights she also, unbeknownst to the other one, both of them often cry themselves to sleep and have a bit of a panic at night about all the things that they have to keep in order and just worrying about being able to keep all of it on their plate. So she's going to go ahead and head to sleep as well. And then our, our last ones to, to see for the night, um, we're going to go ahead and... Um, go outside. Let's take a look at the backyard. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the backyard out here. They have a beautiful little backyard area. Um, out here, look at the beautiful pool. We have a lovely fountain. Um, here's the whole house if you'd like to see it. But as everyone's turning in for the night, one person has one last thing that they like to do before going to sleep. Um, and that is, where is she? <laughs> that is Miss Julia. So we're going to follow her outside real quick. Uh, it's pretty late now. It's almost midnight. It's, or, well, it's about 11 p.m. <laughs> and she's going to go to a little area out in the, outside, out of the back of the backyard of this house. And she's going to go ahead and say, go say goodnight, goodnight to Annabelle up here. Um, so this is the little grave site of her daughter over here, and, um, oh, she's sitting on it, but she has her little journal that she likes to write all of her thoughts and stories and things she wants to say to Annabelle, and, um, if you can't find her in the nursery, you can often find her just sort of sitting out here, uh, either silent or, or talking to Annabelle herself, um, and, and sometimes she kind of loses track of time, doesn't realize how long she's been out here, and it's been, it's been quite a while, actually. She's been out here a few hours, and Terrence has tried to go to bed, but he's realized that she's not uh, in bed next to him, so he's going to go ahead and go outside. He knows exactly where she is. Everyone else in the house has turned in for the night, and the house is quiet. And it's pretty quiet out in the still of the night as well, as she um, sits and mourns over her child, of course, as she always does. Terrence is going to come check on her and drag her to bed, though, uh, as he does almost every night, honestly. Um, if he could make his way over here, that'd be great. Um, oh, did you just hear her sigh? The poor thing. Okay. So yeah, he's gonna go ahead. Let's see. We're gonna give her a hug and say, hey, sweetie, I know. I know you want to say goodnight to Annabelle. It's been like four hours. You said goodnight to her, you're exhausted. I know you're always exhausted, but you need to get some rest for the night. So please go ahead, head inside, go to bed, okay? I just wanna make sure that you are taken care of. Uh, like, I understand, but please just go inside, go to bed. <laughs> so she's gonna, she, I don't know, she tends to listen to Terrence. She knows that he has the best interests at heart for her. So she'll say, yo, yeah, sorry, I just, I lost track of time, you know how it is? I was just thinking and writing and yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and head inside to bed, of course. Um, and as she's, as she's walking in, uh, Terrence is gonna take a moment for himself out here by his, his daughter's grave and um, he doesn't look as, as upset as, as Julia is. I mean, it upsets him seeing her so, so sad all of the time, but as we fade away, from the Winston Manor for tonight. Uh, we will leave Terrence out at the grave as he's muttering to himself about how, uh, God damn it, I never would have had you dealt with if I would have known she'd be so annoying for over a decade later. And that is where we're gonna leave tonight's episode. So, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you tuning in to the premiere of our new soap opera, Traitorous. I hope you enjoyed it. There is lots of drama and lots of plot lines to get into as we move forward. <laughs> um, please leave all your thoughts in the Discord discussion channel. Uh, after this, I would love to be there and talk to you. I'm not going to reveal anything, obviously, but I want to know what you want to have to say. Um, I was nervous, but it went off pretty well, I think. Uh, <laughs> assume that this will be about the typical length of them, I guess. I haven't exactly planned it out, but about, I guess, two and a half hours seems to be as long as it lasted. Uh, I think there's lots of little uh, juicy tips. Hopefully the first episode wasn't too boring. There wasn't a ton of things that happened, but I feel like there's a lot of little things that you guys have to maybe talk about, you know? So, um, 
<laughs> get your brains thinking there'll be another episode next Friday of course and I hope to see you there I see the chat going crazy I will catch up after stream but thank you so much for being here for the premiere I love you so much I hope you're invested I can't wait to share more with you and with that thank you one more time for being here I love you all and I hope you have a wonderful night and a beautiful weekend <laughs> I love you all nighty night cuties bye <laughs> Thank you.